Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of Five Minute EMS Review, where we give you short and to the point reviews of different EMS topics. Today, we are continuing our series on EMS medications with a discussion of amiodarone. Let's get started. Amiodarone is a class three antiarrhythmic. Although it is primarily classified as a potassium channel blocker, it also has effects on sodium and calcium channels, as well as alpha and beta adrenergic receptors. So what does all this mean for us? First, let's remind ourselves that we use amiodarone for ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, wide rhythms. One of my classmates in paramedic school coined the memory aid wide amy for wide amiodarone. We may also use amiodarone to help us in WPW or Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So how does it help us in these situations? To answer that, we have to look back at our cardiac action potential. Remember that we said the primary mechanism of action for amiodarone was blocking the potassium channels. Well, in our fast action potentials, those involving the cardiac muscle tissue and the ventricular conduction system, the potassium channel is primarily involved in phase three, which is repolarization. So if we can block that channel, we can slow down repolarization and extend the absolute refractory period of the cells. This in turn will hopefully help us to restore a more optimal cardiac rhythm. So now that we know what it's used for and how it works, let's look at some contraindications. Amiodarone, like all medications, is obviously contraindicated if the patient is known to be allergic. Another antiarrhythmic could be chosen in this situation. It is also contraindicated in bradycardia and heart block. However, if you think about our use in EMS, since we don't give it prophylactically, we will only be giving it when a patient is presenting in a wide rhythm or perhaps in WPW. These are situations in which we wouldn't see a bradycardia or a heart block. So basically for our purposes, we aren't too worried about contraindications. However, in the setting of hypokalemia or low potassium level, it may be advisable to choose another antiarrhythmic such as lidocaine, since the body is already low on potassium. In EMS, amiodarone is given IV or IO with a dose that depends on the patient's presentation. Patients with a pulse, that is VTAC with a pulse or WPW, are given 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. Patients without a pulse, that is pulseless VTAC or VFib, are given a 300 milligram IV push. Your local protocol may allow for repeat doses and possibly even a maintenance strip after conversion to a normal rhythm. Make sure you are aware of what your protocol allows. Amiodarone can cause prolonged PR, QRS, and QT intervals. So make sure you are monitoring your patient's rhythm continuously and be mindful of possible hypotension or bradycardia after administering amiodarone. Well, that does it for today's episode. We hope you will join us for our next video and would appreciate it if you shared our channel with your friends and colleagues. Tune in next time as we dive into the EMS medication aspirin. We'll see you then.